Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game from uh, Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2020 in Vegan Z. And uh, today, uh, day off, but I would like to show you the game from round 8. And uh, that's not the very long game, but it got my attention because of a quite funny commentary by Jan Gustafsson, Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson and Grandmaster Peter Sfiedler. So... Um, uh, after seeing the moves, which I'm gonna show you, uh, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6, so it's very typical Nidor variation in uh, Sicilian defense, uh, Jan Gustafsson said. Van Forest brothers keep having debate. Who can play the dumbest move? And then he added, Lucas started with bishop d2. Uh, so nobody, of course, play bishop d2, or, or almost nobody play bishop d2. Uh, and then he didn't finish, uh, but the move played by uh, Jordan Van Forest. So we know already Jordan Van Forest as white. He's ranking 2644. And he's a huge surprise on this tournament. He's very well prepared. And he mostly show very un unorthodox, um, you know, play style. He, he, he giving the, the, a lot of strange lines which his opponents uh, sometimes struggle. So this is one of these sides. And uh, and that's what he said, Jan Gustafsson. And then Peter Sfiedler actually answered, Rook G1 is an actual move. I played this myself, so I feel personally attacked. And then he added later, uh, but it went dramatically out of fashion almost immediately after a period which was late 90s. So in late 90s, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk, Peter Sfiedler and other probably Russian players uh, try to develop these moves just they, they played a couple of times and uh, and then and just wasn't so successful but definitely there are some interesting line and uh, if you want to know who gonna play as black that was young prodigy from Iran Ali Reza Firuja. So let's see how Ali Reza can handle that. He play um, as black and 2723 is his actual feeder ranking. So let's see uh, how was played. And, and anyway, this is neither variation in Sicilian and it's called freak attack. So that's freak attack. <laughs> it's quite a great name for an opening. Uh, so knight c6, uh, Firuja didn't care what's going on, and now we have g4, that was obvious. Now the thing is, this pawn actually is hanging, I mean, okay, this is attacked twice, and it's defended twice, uh, but also this knight can be uh, attacked and then the... The, the queen can be lured uh, to d4 and then this pawn can be uh, taken or can it be taken or not uh, feel free to pause the video i switch the sides look you Im imagine you play black and you are you know sicilian player or maybe in real you are and then you play nidorf and then suddenly someone play g4 to you with the uh, rook on g1 what you gonna do you're gonna take this 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 pawn and is if yes how you're gonna take that pawn while i enjoy my cup of tea <sighs> okay so for those who want to just take this uh, this pawn let's take it knight takes on d4 first of course so queen d4 and now Bishop takes on g4. Let's do it. Let's see what's gonna happen. Bishop takes on g4. So we have rook takes on g4, knight takes on g4, and hooray! We have a great situation. But do we? 
queen a4 check queen d7 that looks uh that looks okay bishop b5 bang a takes on b5 queen a8 a check queen d8 queen b7 and now uh check your position and tell me are you sure you want to play it as black that's probably not the best way to go so let's try different way after queen on a4 check maybe b5 would be the answer how about knight b5 bang a takes on b5 and now rook can't be taken but what about bishop b5 check bang queen d7 bang and then we have checkmate how about that okay so we know already that's not really um, the best approach to that so how about taking by knight let's check again so knight takes on d4 queen takes on d4 and now knight takes on g4 we would have probably bishop on e2 knight e5 getting to the central position maybe bishop e3 just developing move uh, knight c6 attacking the queen queen goes to d2 and uh, okay look at this position it's uh, how you're gonna develop what's going on in your how is how is your rook how is your bishop how is your okay this bishop maybe could move somewhere but not much far how about other pieces it's still a lot needed to be done to be developed while white just one move to the castle and they can start attack you want to play g6 what if it's uh, h4 and and then and then for example if you play g6 h4 and you try to play this way how about you get this um this attack what are you gonna do next here not really comfortable situation i'm not saying that's the strongest line but uh, it's not really easy to you know to castle your king probably have to stay uh, in the center and uh, if you try any other way uh, like e6 and uh, like e6 and then bishop on e7 how about this rook attacking on g7 so probably king has to stay in the middle uh, maybe can try the uh, queen side uh, castle uh, but it's still very uncomfortable situation for black even the engine shows that this uh, equal you are the pawn up uh, but in the development i don't think you would like to play that so uh, the answer is yes you can play that but you have to be extremely careful okay but let's go back to the game and we have this situation so freak attack uh, on the board g6 by alireza and here we have g5 attacking the uh, the knight uh, knight has to go somewhere uh, knight h5 maybe would be the option but uh, after after this he, but it would be easily attacked and uh, the pawn structure would be uh, shattered so knight d7 we have h4 so attacking on the king side and knight d4 so exchanging on d4 queen takes on d4 and now knight e5 centralizing the and then the knight but that's the reason to do that uh, this rook was attacked so this g6 was uh, was played and now there are some problems some issues on this diagonal uh, but this is quite okay move because now we have the family fork on the board this is called family fork when the uh, king and queen and rook uh, is attacked at the same time by the um, uh, by the knight so white definitely has to deal something the strongest recommendation by the engine but it's only by the engine king e2 uh, and here of course black want to do something with this knight uh, so first get out of the ping rook g8 and here if white play some you know developing move it looks like good move but then bishop g4 is an issue and if for example f3 knight f3 and now we have fork and also it's the and also it's the 
pin here. So pretty uncomfortable situation would be. So F3 definitely not great move to play. And and this developing move is also not really the greatest one. So after rook g8, knight d5 would have to be played to be the uh, the most possible active ever. And now bishop g4 now would have to be met by rook takes on g4. Um, the reason is if the king moves anywhere and can't move here, can't move here and can't move here. So uh, and here and here would be the family fork. So so not really the, the option. So king e3, that's the only move. But then black would get the very strong attack. And uh, this king in the middle, uh, nothing cool to play in my opinion. So uh, rook g4 would be uh, would be taken. And then after knight g4, uh, bishop h3, maybe, knight e5, and bishop e3, we have situation where it looks okay, but this king in the, in the middle, uh, it, it just looks suspicious. That's uh, not really great um, position. And also... For this threat, maybe bishop on e2 would be would be okay. It looks okay, but after bishop on g7, uh, this queen is under attack. I mean, check, and then uh, the queen can be taken because of this discovered attack. So uh, pretty not comfortable, and and can be play anything active. Like it has to be play queen d1 and the white lack in development so black would catch up probably uh, but if if white try to be active here actually is not recommended b5 now we have bishop on b5 a takes on b5 and yeah we want the rook but actually not knight f3 check king f1 bishop h3 check and and yes white just lost uh, the queen so uh, that's really not uh, great as well so king d1 was played by van forest jordan van forest came uh, quite well prepared he still have you know one hour 42 minutes so he blitz all the moves he know all the lines and here we have rook g8 uh, alireza firuzia have one hour and 10 minutes so 30 minutes uh, at least 30 minutes more spent on his moves and this is only move 11 and 30 minutes by Ali Reza spent already so that's huge advantage for Van Forest so far we have knight on d5 and there are some serious threats for example queen on c3 and now uh, white can uh, check uh, and pick up the the rook and uh, if black decide to be very active and for example attack the, the the queen and the and the rook this is what i said queen c3 so uh controlling uh, this square but also attacking the knight so knight has to take on g1 now we would have knight c1 check king on d7 this is the only move knight takes on a8 now bishop c7 attacking the queen but queen can go to g3 actually and now this knight is lost on g1 but this knight can actually escape so if if black decide to uh, take this this knight for example b5 or whatever bishop e3 is played and this knight is lost but this knight can easily escape uh, actually we check and then move to uh, d5 so uh, white would have extra minor piece and of course uh, easy win for the game so bishop on e6 was played by Ali Reza and here we have queen on b4 so another threat uh, this is um, definitely uh, not possible now uh, because this threat is uh, far more dangerous now there are some uh, if if this b7 is taken now we have check and then we have uh, for example another 
discovered check and some some discoveries to the the king and king would be on d7 already so uh, that's pretty crazy stuff so alireza play rook on b8 and here we have f4 so attacking this knight and now knight c6 attacking the queen queen goes on b6 uh, asking for exchange alireza accept that he it seems like he didn't feel comfortable uh, in that opening and now we have bishop on g7 so keeping the pressure on a b2 um, square we have c3 by van forest and now f5 uh, by alireza so alireza felt like okay this is time to get some breathing space uh it's too it's too crowded here I, I need some space for 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 playing my usual attacking chess we have g takes on f6 en passant and bishop on f6 attacking this this pawn on h4 knight on d5 attacking this bishop but actually this bishop can't now take the, uh, on h4 if this happened then we would have knight c7 with check king d7 knight on e6 and now king takes on uh, e6 uh, and here uh, it's possible just to pick up the rook of course uh, but can also uh, attack the bishop first uh, and after moving uh, now pick up the uh, the rook and after taking the rook can also pick up the the pawn on h7 so that would be uh, lack of development by white but uh, not really difficult to do that and then a rook can come and uh, and the game would be uh, <laughs> of course winning for white so uh, king d7 was played in this uh, situation and now we have rook h1 so um, h pawn is gonna be pushed here we have uh, bishop on g4 asking for exchanging the bishop that um, challenge was accepted and b5 by alireza firuzia we have bishop on e3 so developing the bishop bishop g7 uh, not wanting to exchange it and now we have rook a on d1 centralizing the rook and here b4 uh, and e5 was played by uh, van forest the engine suggests uh, continue the plan with h5 but uh, it doesn't change much uh, actually uh, that what happened in the game so uh, e5 was uh, was okay and here we have b takes on c3 b takes on c3 and rook b2 check so exploring the second rank and king f3 rook f8 so now we have a very serious threat uh, of attacking on e5 but whites are on move so they takes on d6 and also captures on d6 and here we have rook on b1 so want to exchange the rooks uh, alireza said okay but i want to do that on b5 uh, van forest accept so a takes on b5 and here rook b1 attacking this pawn we have rook b8 defending and here h5 uh, alireza just take um, on f5 and now we have rook g1 attacking the bishop first bishop move to h8 and now rook g5 so attacking the the pawns uh, on the king side and now uh, this uh, knight is quite annoying uh, because black can't actually go and play um, an attack on uh, a2 because of this uh, fork would this would happen so uh, black also don't want to go to the center yet uh, so uh, knight e7 was played asking okay so let's um, exchange this um, these knights knights were exchanged uh, and here van forest uh, still have 35 minutes uh, and alireza firuzia used most of his time 10 minutes on the clock uh, and still five moves to 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 be done but uh, all the material is uh, you know exchange so it looks pretty drawish so rook h5 was played bishop on c3 was played uh, king e4 centralizing the king and in this position actually uh, the players 
uh, accepted the draw uh, and, uh, and yeah, half the points for each. So the ending was not very excited, but Freak Attack, Freak Attack is uh, pretty, pretty uh, impressive stuff. Freak Attack after G4. Uh, so yeah, so th this game just shows that uh, being prepared for the tournament is known at least for, you know, more than 100 years. Akiba Rubinstein, I'm making the uh, saga, the series about him. Uh, he always say that uh, for every tournament he is prepared and he has at least two, three novelties. Uh, so all the players, all the world champions knows about that, but they try to find, uh, you know, some some stable lines and there are not many uh, so exciting variations like this one. But Van Forest uh, is going, you know, all in and he playing uh, really crazy chess on this tournament. That's why uh, it's, you know, uh, got my attention and I wanted to share this game. Even it's draw, I want to share with you. I hope you enjoy it. And if you like this video, please press like. If you don't like, please press unlike. But comment under the video and tell me what you think about Freak Attack. Uh, and of course, if you enjoy my content, my style of commenting, uh, feel free to subscribe. And, um, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.